going on everybody and welcome back to the channel now today we've got a reaction video on the man at think school now firstly share uh, wait is it called think tank or i can't remember what the channel's called shit that's my bad hey original link of course in the description we reacted to this man's video um just recently on the uh the, uh, the IPL video with, you know, how the IPL essentially makes its money. I learned a lot in that video. Of course, you know, you know, I mean, that's the whole point of these videos is to learn a little bit more. And today we've got the Dream 11 Exposed, a business case study. Now, firstly, if you don't know what Dream 11 is, well, you probably do, so I'm not even going to bother explaining it. It's like those fantasy games you can either pay, you know, like $1 or $2 or some of them are like $15 to enter a team and... Um, you know, like thousands of people join. You know, it's big here in Australia. It is massive, is sports gambling. Um, it's always been a cultural sort of thing in Australia as well, which is silly, but have I been baited into doing it? Too many times. The amount of, you know, little dollars that I think I'm going to win and then I don't win anything is just too many times. Um, so please, uh, fund my dream. No, okay, I don't play it anymore. I have stopped playing it recently because it's just a scam, isn't it? Like, I, you... You, you'll do it about 10 times, you'll lose 10 times, and then the 11th time you do it, you might get a win, you might win $6. And you're thinking, shit, did I just win six bucks? And then you put that $6 back into the next game, and you lose it all. So it's just a continued cycle of this rinse and repeat money scams, essentially. They're fun, you know, they pass time, it's fun. It keeps you more interested in games as well. But, you know, if Sometimes it's just money, you know? You gotta hold on to money nowadays, but hey, you guys are new subscribe. Let's get Buddy, straight into ever it. Ever since the Indian Premier League has started, the Indian business ecosystem has been pouring in thousands of crores into sponsorships. But while it's quite hey, normal- Hey, hold on a minute, hold on. I know we're eight seconds into the video. This will be the last pause of the video, guys. Don't you worry. But Chris Gale. But yeah, look at that old RCB shirt. Nah, I, I know I say this all the time, but RCB really had like the best merchandise when they first came in. Like this old bloke, oh my God. Oh, but so while sexy. it's quite normal to see a company like Pepsi or Tata pour in hundreds of crores to sponsor the IPL, in 2020, it was mind boggling to see that a 12 year old startup Dream Dream Lemon won the bid to sponsor the IPL for an astonishing 222 A 12 year old? Crores. And since then, Dream Lemon has become one of the fastest growing sports fantasy platforms in the country the with more than 140 million users as of 2021. Yeah. And guess what? Dream Sports is now valued at $8 billion and is now one of the rare consumer focused startups to actually post a profit. Mm. As of 2020, their profit stood at 180.8 crores and the revenue has already crossed 2,000 crores. Oh my the God. question is, what is this Dream Level model? How are they able to generate profits in spite of spending hundreds of crores into marketing? And most importantly, how did this company very, very cleverly escape the garment regulation that could have banned it for being a gambling game? Bad. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions of curious learners... Hey, shout out to the sponsor, uh, Skillshare, I think he called. Shout out to them. Uh, just... No fresh air, it's on the channel, baby. All right, which, uh, how far ahead are we? UI UX design, they have it okay, all. Okay, that's not it, my bad. I'll edit all this out, don't worry, you guys won't see this. Okay, we're still in it, gee whiz. This is a bit of a long one. Uh, this means that. Okay, sorry, it's still going, actually. This is my bad, guys, sorry. Uh, all right, we should be good now. That is lesser than the cost of a Starbucks coffee. Really? For Think Schoolers, Skillshare is giving a one month. Okay, we're still not done. <laughs> this is my bad, guys, look. Here we go. All right, Does let's the Dream go. 11 model work? Let's say Shubham wants to try his hand on Dream 11. And now that it's the IPL season, Shubham is a Chennai Super Kings fan. Really? And he's excited about the CSK MI match. So he selects the CSK MI match and is given a 100 crore virtual purse to select his team of 11 members. This purse is capped and is the same for everyone who's wanting to play on Dream 11. Now, obviously, the better the player, the higher will be the amount that Shubham has to pay to get the player into his team. And this is where the strategy comes in. In this case, if Mahindra Singh Dhoni and Rohit Sharma both have a Dream 11 price tag of 11.5 crore, although Shubham would want to have both of them in his team, he wouldn't be able to do so because he would be left with very little money to purchase yep. other players. Now, if you're a Dream 11 fan, whatever you do, do not pick Dhoni. It is always a scam of money to pick Dhoni for the highest price. He bats at seven. He obviously doesn't bowl. He's sitting behind the stumps. He might take one or two catches. 
You, for the value that he provides in Dream 11, do not pick him, whatever you do, because it's just a... You know, it's only a one-off chance that he's going to come out there and hit 55 off 20 runs. <laughs> like, who knows? Another catch we heard is that Shubham, although a CSK fan, cannot pick all the 11 players from CSK. Yeah, At obviously. max, he can pick six members from CSK and a minimum of five. Mm -hmm. Meaning, he will either have to select five or six players from Mumbai also. Now, please note this very, very carefully because it's very important for the discussion ahead. So coming back, the teams have to be logged in before the start of the game. The yeah. toss is where Shubham would actually get to know the playing level and he would quickly make the changes to his team based on who is in and who has been benched. Yeah. Now, Shubham enters his team into contests. Yeah, These Shubham. contests are a pool of different people who enter the contest with different permutations and combinations of the 22 available players. Yeah. This contest starts from as low as 10 rupees but could go all the way up to thousands of rupees. Yeah. Now, let's say Shubham who is a little skeptical enters the contest with an entry fee of 50 rupees Is and just what? like Shubham, there will be thousands of players who will enter the contest. Now, Dream11 basically acts as an organizer for these contests such that all of these players are categorized on the basis of the amount and the participants then play the game. So there will be a 50 rupees contest, a thousand rupees contest and so on and so forth. For 50 rupees, let's say the number of participants is 3 lakh and only the top 50% of the participants get a payout. And for this, there's a sliding scale of payouts from rank 1 to rank 1.5 lakh. So the first ranker gets the highest amount and from there onwards, the amount keeps descending. And whether Shubham ends up in the top 50% or not, depends on how well the players he chose actually played in the match. Alright, I just want you guys right now in the comments, tell me if you have actually ever played, you know, Dream 11 or any sort of fantasy game, any sort of, you know, gambling stuff like this. It is gambling at the end of the day. You know, just because you enter only maybe $1 or $2 and, you you know, you think, oh, who cares if I lose it, I'll just throw it in. Who knows? I might win the big prize. You're never going to win the big prize, guys, I'm telling you. If you have won the big prize, shout out to you. But the closest I have ever gotten, and I've done this like hundreds, not hundreds, fuck that. I've done it, you know, maybe 15, 20, 30 times. Um, I've came maybe fourth at best last year in the Punjab Kings versus Mumbai Indians game. That's the only one where I ever won any money and it was like $15. And it's like, cool, but I'm literally going to feed all this back through and then lose it. So, <laughs> shit. <laughs> and eventually, the number of points his team makes decides how much money Shubham will make. These point systems are preset by guilt? Dream 11. So you get a different point for a catch, a different point for mm. a wicket, a different point for the number of runs your player scores. And you can see all of these in real time along with your ranking. Yeah. And from there onwards, you have nothing in your control. All yeah. you can do is just wait it's and luck. hope that your players play well. Yeah. This is how, based Chica. on the choice of players, some Dream 11 members will lose while some will Ooh. win. If this is very, very clear to you, let's try to understand how do these fantasy sports companies like Dream 11 actually make money. The answer to this is pretty simple. Yeah. Roughly 20% of the total amount collected for a contest goes to Dream 11 as commissions. So if the entry fee for a contest is 50 rupees and 3 lakh people enter the contest, then the total money collected amounts to 1.5 crores, out of which 20% is usually Dream 11's cut. So in this case, if 1.5 crore is collected, 30 lakhs by default is Dream 11's cut and the rest of the amount, that's 1.2 crores, mm is disbursed to the winners as payouts. Yeah. So when you as a user enter various contests, you make money in some, you lose money in some. And regardless of whether you make money or not, Dream11 always walks away with a hefty profit. Mm -hmm. Now the question over here is, isn't this just like gambling? Yes. I mean, even over here, users select a particular player and they do that because they hope that the players will play well. And when they do, these players actually win. And just like in betting, while the money of the players placing the bet is left to chance, the bet organizer wins by default. Exactly! So, if I'm it saying. so obviously looks Shit. like gambling to us, and considering the fact that betting is banned in most of the states in India, oh, is it? how is this company operating? Oh, wait, is that true? Wait, I'm, I'm getting on my phone. If you guys want to skip ahead and you don't care what I have to say, then that's okay, but... I just... Is that true? Gambling is essentially banned in India. I didn't think that was true. I didn't... I, I haven't actually ever heard of that. For online gaming industry in a division which we're brought in last year to ban all forms of gambling in the state, including... On okay. So, it was Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Um, I don't know which other places. I think probably a lot of places. Hey, I, I like that. I actually really like that. That's... 
you know, I'm sure people, it probably can annoy them, but it's just saving you in the long run. I like that. It's, it's a good law. the country and that too being a sponsor to the biggest sports events in India. Yeah, they promote the this lies in a Rajasthan High Court case when a man named Chandresh Shankla filed a complaint with the Rajasthan High Court. Really? And he stated that the public is being defrauded in the name of Dream 11 <laughs> and that it amounts to gambling and betting and should not be allowed in India. But guess what? The Rajasthan High Court dismissed the petition by relying on the judgments of the Punjab, Haryana and Bombay High Court. The High Court observed while dismissing the petition and stated, and I quote, It can be safely deduced that the result of the fantasy games is not determined merely by chance or accident. What? The skill of the participant determines the result of the game and has a predominant influence on the outcome of the fantasy. Oh, hell no. That is just a lie. That is BS right there. Bro, there is no skill involved at all. There is literally no skill involved. Like, yes, you have to know, like, some of the players. You have to pick the players that I'm sure will do good. But at the end of the day, sport is just luck. Like, you could pick Guykwood and he could go out there, score zero. But you could pick his opening partner of Utapau and you, he could score 100. It's just luck. You just never know. But then the next game, Guykwood will score 100 and Utapau will go out for a duck. It's just pure luck at the end of the day. How is that not a gamble? Okay. <laughs> this is what the court what? said. In fact, this was even taken to Supreme Court and the outcome was no different. The petitioners contended that fantasy sports companies like Dream11 are pure gambling and not games of skill. Now, in order to understand this argument, we first have to decide on the definition of gambling. Mm. Gambling is often defined as betting, gaming or participating in an activity mm. that will be a game of luck and not the sport of skill exactly. to win a much bigger amount of money or fucking... any other prize by wagering ah. some amount of money. Now for Dream 11, the defense was that it takes analytical skills, strategy and historic knowledge about the players before picking them and putting them in a team together. It's not mere chance and it's not done knowing the outcome of the game. Rawr. And here's where the feature that we discussed earlier comes into play. You see guys, when you're playing on Dream 11, you aren't betting on one team alone. Uh, the 11. 11 players that you select will be in a 5-6 combination. Meaning, you've got 5 players from one team and you have to pick 6 players from the other team or vice versa. Joffre Archer. <laughs> and the argument over here is that, with the knowledge of the player's past performance and on the basis of the record in certain games, a judgement is supposedly made by the players yeah. of Dream 11. Like, Chris Gale usually gets out very quickly in the finals or oh. Tony plays insanely <laughs> well at Chennai. Damn, my man just roasted Chris Gale. <laughs> so by observing Shit. these kind of records, it's argued that the players of Dream 11 are using their skill and knowledge to end up on the winning side. <laughs> and with this in consideration, the Rajasthan High Court observed that, and I quote, whether any particular team in the real world match wins or loses is also immaterial as the selection of the virtual team by the participant involves choosing players from both teams playing in the real world. And that's exactly what the Supreme Court also stated. This is how the case was closed and Dream 11 was legally safe. But the problem was that from the marketing standpoint, the damage had already been done. Despite the judgment going in their favor, it was still perceived to be a gambling game as soon as this news broke out. In fact, Google Play Store doesn't even host Dream 11 on their platform. And you might have downloaded really? the app through an APK from the Dream 11 website. This is because the Play Store has strict guidelines on the apps that indulge in gambling directly or indirectly. Really? So the question is Wait, I don't, I actually, the most popular phones probably in Australia is probably an iPhone, which I'm lucky enough to have, or like a Samsung or a, an Oppo, are probably the three popular phones that I see probably the most in Australia. But obviously Apple's the only one that isn't on the Play Store. Is that true? Is that just for certain countries or... Because, I mean, everyone in Australia, like, has fucking gambling apps on their phone. It's just, it's a, it, it honestly is a bad thing for our country. To... <laughs> very, very but simple. They roped in the legend Mahindra Singh Dhoni himself. And Darn when it. Dhoni endorses a particular brand, we all know what is the effect of it. Yeah, true. Along with that, Dream11 also launched a campaign with the tagline Kelo Dimakse, very evidently mean? highlighting the need for strategic thinking. Oh. This is how Dream11 got back into the game. And along with Dream11, many such sports fantasy companies have jumped into the cricketing craze to mm. make as much money as possible. Hey, and smart. the Dream Sports $8 billion valuation makes it quite obvious as to where this industry is heading. Now the question is, should you play Dream11 or not? Well, people, if you ask me, here's my two cents. 
I don't know if Dream 11 is a game of skill or a game of chance, but what I know for sure is that the amount of time and money that you're pouring into Dream 11, if the same thing is channelized towards acquiring a skill, it is bound to give you way more returns hey. and the probability of getting return increases. Oh, shout out to this man right here. Just getting very inspirational on the... I was going to save my inspirational speech till the end of the video, but he just did it for me. Thank you very and much. And the same thing is what I say about network marketing also. Fact. There is no question about whether that is a scam or not. <laughs> the only point is when there are far better ways to make more money and that too more calculatively, why do you need a network marketing scheme or a Dream 11 like app to make money? And if you're just doing it for thrill, then that's completely your call. Yeah. And just like what I say for crypto, only put in as much money as you can afford to lose. So tomorrow if you put in 1000 rupees and you lose it, it should no way affect your life or your family's life. If that True. is clear, then it is pretty much okay to play Dream 11. Yeah. But if you ask me, I would always go for a skill than going for a fantasy sports <laughs> app. And before we say goodbye, Think School is now available in Tamil and Telugu. So if your parents or your friends wanted to hey. listen to these business case studies in their own regional language because they were not comfortable with English, do share those channels with them and do support us in our journey to provide world-class education to the grassroots of India. I'm in Australia, so oh, you're also providing education to Australia. You're worldwide, my friend. Don't just limit yourself to India. You're, you're worldwide. Um, That's all from my side today, guys. If you learned something valuable, please make... I did learn something valuable. Shout out to the man right here. Of course, firstly, original links in the description. I'm sure everyone probably knows who this guy is in this channel and probably loves it. But if you haven't, go and check him out. Show him some love. Um, but hey, I mean... Shit, I'm not going to give another inspirational speech on top of his, but like he said, just if you think you can, you know, if you want to play the... Am I going to ever play these games again? Probably. You know what? Shit. I'm not going to sit here and lie and say that I will never play another fantasy game again or anything like that because it's something I like to do. It's, you know, it can be fun, but I like to choose ones that, that don't involve money. There's massive fantasy sports here in Australia for whenever the Big Bash is on. Um, our national sport, AFL, rugby, um, national cricket games. Like, fantasy games is everywhere across the world. And, you know, luckily, most of them in Australia now, you don't, you don't pay. You just make teams and manage it. And that is entirely skill. But when you're putting money and money and you're just throwing money into this scam, essentially... Shit, I guess I'm never going to get that Dream 11 sponsor on my channel <laughs> after calling them a scam, but I don't even care. Who cares? Um, they are. So be careful with your money. Gamble responsibly. Hey, we've learned a bit about this. I've learned a lot. So, hey, shout out to the man. That'll cap it off, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.